Hello everybody, I'm Charles Kanufke, I'm the Western Regional Manager for Wattstopper and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about how you can take a DLM system and actually add network connectivity to it. Previous presenters have talked to you a little bit about how you can use DLM to do on-off control or you can do dimming control, but pretty much all the control was based on occupancy sensing. So if you've got an occupancy sensor in the room and it's already doing the controls, why would you ever need to actually network it? We're going to answer that question and talk to you a little bit about some of the features that you get by doing networking. Question comes up, why do you want to be able to do it? Well, think about the facility engineer that's at a school district. They've got 20 different schools across the area and what they've got is a phone call that comes in and says, we'd like to be able to adjust the light level or adjust the time delay on a sensor, but the school's 15 miles away. Rather than have to get in the car, go out to that school and actually then go up and adjust the, uh, the occupancy sensing time delay, wouldn't it be better if there was a way of being able to access that whole school system remotely and then be able to go online and just change the time delay in the setting that it would be a couple seconds and it's all done. So remote configuration is a really important capability that we're going to be offering with DLM. The other things that might come up is actually things like scheduling. There may be times when you want to be able to have an area where the time delay is set for a longer period so there's no nuisance tripping during the day. After hours though, if you're looking for being able to get the most energy savings out of that area, wouldn't it be great if, if you could change the time delay down to let's say 5-10 minutes and now a janitor goes into the space, leaves the space, the lights are on only for 5 minutes or 10 minutes and then they go off automatically. So that ability of doing scheduling of uh, what we're referring to as our normal hours mode and our after hours mode, you get that capability when you start talking about networking the system. One of the other things, and I'm sure Mike was talking to you earlier about that, is in every one of the LMCT, uh, sorry, in every one of the LMRC units, what we've got is a CT, a current transducer. It's measuring the amount of power that's actually coming out of the circuit breaker, going through this device, and then out to all the individual lights. That's a really fantastic capability, but if the information is in here, how do we get it to someplace useful so that you know about it? How do we put it on a screen in order for you to be able to see what's going on? If you've got a network going and talking to this particular room where this device is, at that point then you could be able to talk to all the LMRCs and be able to see what their current measures are and then start doing what we call dashboarding, taking all that information and aggregating it together. So let's talk a little bit though about some of the market conditions that are going on around us right now. One of the things that comes up a lot, and I, I just wanted to mention this specifically, is fixture control versus zone control. What DLM actually does with its room controllers is control a group of lights based on how they've been circuited electrically, either on the line voltage power or on the 0 to 10 volt power. There are systems out there and protocols like DALI, which is the Digital Addressable Lighting Interface, where you can actually have a network that talks to every individual feature. It's a fantastically flexible system, but with that flexibility comes actually a real heartache in trying to get programming done. Because imagine if every individual fixture has got its own address, every fixture has got 16 different groups that it can be part of, every fixture has got 16 different scenes that it can be part of. Imagine the facility person who's maybe just, it was a TI done and it's a one floor office. Now, who is going to be able to really take care of all that documentation? Fixture-based controls offer a lot of promise. The worry, though, is are you getting a system that's going to be easy to use and that then is going to be easy to maintain? One of the other things you need to watch out for is proprietary networks. Oftentimes what you may have is a lighting control system where the communication bus between the different devices is its own specific manufacturer uh, protocol. What we said is, we understand that because we actually use our own protocol inside the room to talk from one DLM device to another device to another device to another device inside the room. But by using that, we're guaranteed that an electrician who comes in and actually connects all these devices by connecting them together, the uh, components, one right after the other, they actually now get their own room set up and they can commission and check out that one room. However, we want to control the lights in the room. We're willing to share the information in that room with anybody that wants. And so now we can start talking about the fact that via BACnet, which is the language that actually has been proposed by ASHRAE, the American Society of Heating, uh, Refrigeration, Air Conditioning Engineer. This is a programming language or a protocol rather that they've put together to allow you to be able to communicate between devices. Wattstopper uses BACnet so that you'd be able to communicate to the network, through the network rather, to the individual room. So what we're, as I mentioned before, what we're trying to do is of course 
try and avoid high maintenance costs. So what we're hoping with this is that this is a simple enough system that you can put it in and basically there doesn't need to be a need for a service contract. However, you now have the opportunity of being able to uh, have the additional features that you get by networking from somebody else, some integrator that's available in the area that you've worked with before that's actually already taking care of your buildings. When we're talking about networks, one of the other kind of key words that comes up is flat networks. And a flat network is when you have basically a data line that goes from the device to the device to the device to the device, and someplace you've got a brain on that network, the thing that's actually responsible for doing the scheduling, for sending out the messaging. Well, imagine if you've got a flat network and at some point that network breaks. Now you've got communication on part of the network, but the rest of the network doesn't know what it's supposed to do. So the issue that you may have with a flat network is, okay, I've now lost control of the lights inside the space. If it happens at night, now how do I get those lights on uh, when morning comes? Well, with Wattstopper, what we've said is, we've talked about the free topology for the devices inside the room, so you don't have to worry about that. And the devices will always work, so even if you came in and took the network off the, uh, the, the room controllers so now they're isolated, they will still work and be able to control the things that are going on and off inside the room. So one of the last points that we want to make before we dive into the session is we want to talk about the importance of understanding the application versus being able to use technology. We believe that we've got great technology in the devices. There are all sorts of other things that are coming on that are always coming onto the scene, things like Zigbee, people are talking about the, uh, wireless communication. And we thought, wouldn't it be smart before we actually jumped into something that we didn't understand fully, why don't we make sure that the DLM network works properly? And the way that we do that is we make sure we've got a Cat5 wire. It's not a very costly installation. It's actually extremely easy to install those devices. And Later on, I think you'll be seeing from WhatsApp wireless products that will actually build on this. But for right now, let's make sure that we've actually got a system so that if there's any issue at all, any electrician out there can actually troubleshoot these products and not have to worry about using some sort of a packet sniffer or something like that that actually has to enunciate each individual message. Anything in DLM can pretty much be solved by just taking a uh, Cat5 cable off a device, trying a different one, and replacing the device itself. So that's where we're at with DLM, and that's kind of the market condition that we're looking at overall.